Oh, guy, you got to see this guy. Oh, I don't know what I said. Oh, I don't remember. He's jumping on my lap. And I've loved kids jumping on my lap. Yo, what's up, dorks? Welcome back to yet another educational English video. I am your new dad. And today, we are looking at the USA. Just the other day, we had the very first round of presidential debates. And a lot of people, even all over the US, are trying to understand what the heck was being said. You had two angry old men yelling at each other on stage, and we want to know what it all means. So this is a great opportunity for us to learn English by Teacher Trump and Teacher Biden. The USA is an absolutely crazy place right now. Tensions are super high. Things are nuts. And uh, we're going to use this as an opportunity to learn. Oh, man. Election season again. Tell me about it, man. It's like every four years I lose like dozens of friends. <sighs> well, you know, I'm glad that we like the same guy. I know, right? Like, I just can't imagine being friends with someone who doesn't share the same views as I do on elected officials. Right? It's like, ooh, I like a guy that has different values than the guy that you like. I mean, if you don't like the guy that I like, it means you want to destroy democracy. Yeah, dude, my dad used to vote differently than me. Ew. Yeah, well, no, we don't talk to him anymore. He's off in like Vermont doing some weird libertarian stuff now, trying to, trying to find himself, you know? Well, I'm just really happy that we both like the same guy. Yeah, I mean, we like the same guy, right? Old white guy? Yeah. Bad at public speaking? Yeah. Tons of allegations of sexual misconduct? Yes. Wait, their children made millions of dollars in countries that we don't necessarily get along with? Y yeah, but I mean, that's technically all of those are both candidates. Okay, okay. On the count of three, we're both going to say the candidate that we like. Are you ready? One, One two, two, three, three. Trump! Ah! Before we jump into today's video, let me quickly say please stick around all the way to the end of this video to get all of this juicy, dope information. Also, if you like what you see, Make sure you smash that like button, make sure you poke that subscribe button, and tickle that little bell for notifications. Lastly, join the Discord. We've got a lot of awesome stuff going on over there, and I'd like to have you join our dork army. So I'll see you over on Discord, but now, let's learn some English. So yesterday's debate, or should I say a couple days ago, because I'm recording this when it was yesterday and you're going to watch this when it was a couple days ago, was just absolutely wild. There's no cutting around the insanity that ensued. You had Trump fighting with Biden, Biden fighting with Trump, and the candidates were yelling at each other, insulting each other, and just kind of going crazy the whole time. So I would like to use this opportunity to see what they were saying. Let's listen to what they said and try to see if we can learn new words to help us improve our English. And if anything, maybe we'll have a better understanding of American politics in general. How are you doing, man? How are you doing? I, I want to make sure... You graduated last in your class, not first in your I, class. <laughs> I want to make Mr. sure... Mr. President, can you let him finish, sir? No, he doesn't know how to do that. He has, You'd you know, you, you pick be surprised. the Go wrong ahead, guy, the wrong night at the wrong time. <laughs> we just jumped right in and immediately we got an insult. Ooh, we, ouch. Right off the bat, Trump pulls off his gloves and swings hard, punches Biden, verbally of course, by saying that he graduated last in his class. Well, what does that mean to graduate last in your class? Does that mean that you finish school later than everybody else? No. Graduating last in your class means that you got the lowest grades out of everybody else that you graduated with. Now, I'm not sure if this is true or if this is even something that you can verify, but Biden did not look happy when Trump said that. And that's because basically Trump was calling Biden an idiot. And it's kind of irony, right? Because people often criticize Trump's intelligence, so now Trump is criticizing his opponent's intelligence with uh, quite, quite a, a wild claim. 
And uh, look, so last in your class means that you were the least intelligent person that graduated with you. It means you got the lowest grades. You didn't do as well as your other classmates. When I teach you guys insults, I don't teach them for you to go out and use them against other people, but it is good to know insulting phrases in case you ever hear them directed at you or in case you're wondering what they mean when you hear them. Vote now. You pack the Make court? sure you, in fact, let people know he doesn't you're want to a senator. The I'm not going to answer the question Why because, you answer that because question? the you question is, is the new question Supreme is, court justice, the radical question, left. Will you who shut is up, your, man. Listen, who is Here in this clip, we have Trump demanding that Biden says whether or not he plans on packing the court. And Biden kind of refuses to answer that question. Throughout the whole debate, he refuses to answer that question. Uh, but what does that mean to pack the court? When a government packs the court, what they're doing is they're adding Supreme Justices, basically Supreme Court judges. The court they're talking about is the Supreme Court, and packing it means they're adding more seats or more judges to the Supreme Court. So in this case, what Trump is asking is whether or not Biden plans to add more Democratic judges to the Supreme Court to counterbalance the amount of Republican judges that are there right now. The Supreme Court is extremely important. It's one of our three, uh, our three systems that we have. So if, if it gets overloaded with Democrats or it gets overloaded with Republicans, well, then all of a sudden laws in the United States are going to be more based on that party. So for example, if there's more Democrats, well, there's, it's going to be a more Democratic deciding court, meaning more laws uh, backed by Democrats will get passed and vice versa for Republicans. And that also goes with repealing old laws. So it's always whoever, you know, you, you, whatever party you're with, you always want there to be more judges from your party than the, the other party. And, and packing the court means they're going to add more judges to make sure that happens for them, even if it's not necessarily what the American citizens want. Oh, and last thing. I love when Biden told Trump to shut up. Oh, shut up, man. I love that, right? And and what does it mean to tell someone to shut up? To shut up means to be quiet. It's not a nice way to say it. It's like, you be quiet right now. Shut up. 40,000 people a day are contracting COVID. In addition to that, about between 750 and 1,000 people a day are dying. When he was presented with that number, he said it is what it is. Well, it is what it is because you are who you are. He knew all the way back in February how serious this crisis was. He knew it was a deadly disease. What did he do? He's on tape is acknowledging he knew it. He said he didn't tell us or give people a warning of it because he didn't want to panic the American people. You don't panic. He panicked. And here, Biden snaps back. We have him confronting Donald Trump over the catastrophic failure that was the way the U.S. handled the COVID-19 out, COVID outbreak. One of the really good phrases used here, though, it is what it is. It is what it is is a very common phrase used in the USA. And you use this phrase to express when something can't be changed, right? People aren't really happy to hear it is what it is. So if you do something and, and you can't change what you did, you're not happy with how it turned out, well, it is what it is. You can't change it. In this case, Biden is saying that Trump's reaction to the outbreak was that it is what it is. He didn't do enough to, to help the outbreak. He just kind of sat back and watched it happen. And lastly, we have the word panic, which is a fairly easy one. But if you don't know, panic is when it kind of means like fear, but it's like a really extreme fear. So like when you're, when you're panicking, you're freaking out like, ah, ah, no, ah, that's a panic. Let's move on. Are you willing tonight? to condemn white supremacists and militia groups sure. and to say that they need to stand down and not add to the violence in a number of these cities as we saw in Kenosha and as we've seen in Portland. Sure, Are you I'm prepared to, to do specifically that, do it? Well, I, go would ahead, say, I would say almost everything I see is from the left wing, not from the right so wing. So what, 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 what are you saying? I'm, I'm willing to do anything. I want to see well, peace. Then do it, sir. Say I, it. Do it. Say it. Do you want to call them... What do you want to call them? Give me a name. Give me a white name. White supremacists and right like me to condemn? White Proud supremacists boys. and right the Proud boys. Stand back and stand by. But I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. 
Somebody's got to do something about Antifa and the left, because this is not a right-wing problem. This is, this is a left-wing problem. This is a left-wing problem. And here we have probably the most viral clip from this entire debate, which is Trump being asked if he would condemn white supremacy, and his reaction or his answer to that was, Proud Boys, stand back and stand by. I honestly don't know what he was thinking when he said that because I generally, I'm not one of those guys that thinks that Trump is racist. I'm not a big Trump supporter. I'm not a big Trump fan. Uh, I don't think of him as an inherently racist guy though, and I will debate people when they say that. However, comments like these, it's really hard to debate it then because let's take a look at the Proud Boys. The Proud Boys are not an inherently racist group. They're not a white supremacist group, but they have been known for, especially lately, for causing a lot of violence in the USA and clashing violently with other groups. And they also have been outed for having a lot of openly racist people involved in their leadership. Now, it doesn't mean that every person who identifies as a Proud Boy is a racist or that the group is a racist group but you have a lot of racist people kind of running it and they they uh, are, are quite violent. So here's the problem. Trump tells them, stand back. That's a good thing to say, stand back. But then he says, stand by. And when you tell somebody to stand by, you're telling them to get ready for what happens next. So uh, that's not really condemning white supremacy or it's not really condemning racism. He's telling them, stand back, but be ready for when we need you, because we need you, kind of thing. And, and that's, that's a bit of a scary thing to say. Let's also take a look at this word condemn. And I should have explained that before, but to condemn means you publicly uh, express your disapproval or your unhappiness with something. So like your teacher can condemn you in front of the class for not doing your work. Or um, in this case, Trump's being asked to condemn white supremacy, which everybody I think is on board with no white supremacy. That's not okay. Nobody wants white supremacists. So this is a, a kind of foot and mouth situation. That was, that's, we're going to be hearing this clip a lot, I think over the next month until election day. And it's not a pretty thing to hear. Let's, let's jump on to the last one. Go ahead, Vice President. Number Biden. one, uh, he, he knows that, uh, what I proposed, what I proposed is that, uh, we expand Obamacare and we increase it. We do not wipe any. And one of the big debates we had with 23 of my colleagues trying to win the nomination that I won, we're saying that Biden wanted to allow people to have private insurance still. They can. They do. They will under my proposal. It's not what you've said, but and it's not what your is, party has said. That is simply Your party a lie. doesn't say it. Your party wants simple. to go socialist my medicine party is and me. socialist right healthcare. now. I am and the they're going to dominate party. you, Joe. You know that. I am the Democratic Party right now. The platform of the Democratic Party Harris. is what I, in fact, approved of. What I approved of. So this is the last clip for today. And this one is loaded with all sorts of really important political terms. Uh, and this is probably the most politically charged one out of all of them. And we're going to be talking about healthcare in America. Or we just heard them talk about healthcare in America. Let's take a look at a few key details or a few key words. And we're going to start off with Obamacare. Obamacare is the also known as the Affordable Health Care Act. And this is supposed to help people who cannot afford health care get health insurance in the United States. However, it was a very bad program. It's really often criticized because one, it's more expensive than other routes. Two, it raised taxes, which is insane because we're paying for it anyways. Why do I also have to pay more taxes because of it? And three, you cannot opt out, which means that you cannot choose to not have health insurance, which is a fundamental right of, of Americans should say, I don't want this, I will not do it. Uh, and so that all of a sudden raises a lot of red flags. Like I said before, it's more expensive. It also raised my taxes and I can't opt out of it unless I have a different uh, option for healthcare. So it's basically a lose-lose situation for everybody. Obviously, Biden wants to fix it where Trump wants to get rid of it and, and let kind of capitalism take its course. And and Biden's like, no, let's, let's improve on this thing. Um, so let's take a look at one of the other key things that were said, which Trump said 
uh, socialism medicine, which he meant socialized healthcare or socialized medicine. Socialized medicine is when the government provides free healthcare for all of its citizens. Now that is something that I am totally on board for. I would like to have that. It works really well in the UK. It works really well in Canada. It works really well in many other countries. That's something that I believe in. And, and you could raise my taxes for that. I'd be all, I'd be all for it. However, the USA isn't really a country designed like that. We don't really have any other institutions that are kind of even close to that. Maybe elementary school, middle school, high school, but that's about it. Anyways, uh, that's about all I can handle when it comes to talking about politics. If you like this video, make sure you smash that like on this video, that like, smash that like, no, smash that like button on this video, uh, punch that subscribe button, and headbutt that uh, little bell for notifications. And uh, yeah, leave me a comment in the comment section down below. Thank you so much for sticking around. Uh, also, if I can have just a couple more seconds for some affirmation. Baby, 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 baby. Whoa, baby, 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 baby. Now for a little bit of quick affirmation. I just wanted to let you know, look, the world is a crazy place right now and it's really easy to get caught up in the negativity and to be mean to people and to be rude and, and to shut other people down. But if it isn't a time for anything, it is a time for listening. Listen to what other people have to say. Assume that everybody that you're talking to knows something that you don't. And the world is a lot better when we just take the time to listen. I'm proud of you. I hope you're proud of you. Stand, stand up tall, keep your shoulders back, head up. And I'll see you next time.